Hi, this is Asya Now, and you're watching the Weekly Wrap. First up in Malaysia, authorities on Thursday have returned the body of Kim Jong Nam, the murdered half brother of North Korean leader Kim Jong Un, to North Korea. The next morning saw the return of nine Malaysians trapped in Pyongyang following mutual travel bans issued between the two countries during a spat over the investigations into the murder. Also in Malaysia, a naked man pacing dangerously along the ledge of a high-rise building in the capital, Kuala Lumpur, gave residents a scare on Monday. The man, believed to be a mentally ill foreign national, was eventually coaxed down by firefighters from allegedly attempting suicide. He was handed over to the police after his rescue. A Singaporean couple who starved their Filipino domestic helper, causing her to lose about 20 kilograms over a 15-month period, were jailed and fined on Monday. Freelance trader Lim Chun Hong and his wife Chong Sui Foon had provided Thelma Oyasan Gawidan only two paltry meals a day while she worked for them. She even had to ask permission to drink water. Still in Singapore, a Vietnamese man was found decapitated after falling from a 15-storey hotel room and hitting a railing in the wee hours of Wednesday morning following an altercation with his friend. The body of Nguyen Ngap Doe was found in the drain on the fifth floor, but his head had landed outside a fourth-storey eatery. Continuing with the macabre theme, but in Indonesia this time, a man was found dead inside the belly of a seven-meter-long python on Monday in the Indonesian island of Sulawesi. Akbar was reported as missing since Sunday when he was seen setting off to harvest oil palms near his remote village of Salubiro. Eerily, villagers had heard cries coming from the palm grove the night before he was found. And we now head over to Bangkok with our Thailand partner Nation TV for the latest roundup from the Northern ASEAN region. Thank you very much, KL, for your updates. And now let's take a look here over the past week in the Northern ASEAN region, starting off with Laos. As the Lao government plans to extend its traditional New Year holidays from three days to five days this year. Like several Northern ASEAN countries, Laos officially celebrates the New Year in April. This year, the Lao government plans to extend the holidays to five days from April the 13th to April the 17th. The festival is aimed at maintaining Laos tradition as well as promoting tourism. And in Vietnam, Vietnam's river in the north of the country has been facing a problem of decreased water level for 20 years, affecting farmers in the area. The water level of the Red River in northern Vietnam has fallen for two meters in some sections, while the Red River Delta is home to 26 million people. Meanwhile, Vietnamese authorities are trying to find solutions to the fallen water level. Moving on to Myanmar, as the country has recently welcomed its first Japanese food court in Yangon, its former capital. The food court operates in Sule Square and is called Tokyo Dining City. Its operation managers say that the Japanese food court is outstanding from others as it offers authentic Japanese food, culture and hospitality. Japanese food has increasingly gained popularity in Myanmar, in which the first Japanese restaurant opened in 1988. And here in Thailand, Uber is still running its services despite a request by the Thai government to temporarily stop their services. Now the Ministry of Transport is conducting a study about ride-sharing apps. The U.S.-based company says that the service is continuing while it is in talks with the Thai government on how to make the services legal. The Ministry of Transport estimated that the study will take 6 to 12 months. And our last story is from Cambodia as Priya Sihanouk province welcomed nearly 2.4 million tourists in 2016. The Cambodian province generated 96 million US dollars in revenue following a significant rise in domestic and international tourist arrivals. According to a senior tourism official, overall arrivals to the coastal province grew by 37% last year compared to 2015. The growth was driven by a sharp uptake in domestic tourism, with the number of visitors surging 45% last year, while the international tourist arrivals increased 12%. And that's it for this episode of ASEAN Wrap from the Northern ASEAN region. This has been Sathapat Patong, and now back to you, KL. Thank you, Bangkok. Thanks for watching. I'm Daniel Abakri, and happy April Fools.